What's up? What's up, y'all? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. It's your girl, A. I came to talk and chat and chit-chat today. What's up, y'all? What's up, everybody? So today, I just figured I would just sit in my bathroom and do this video. You know, like, sometimes you just want to sit somewhere else. And it's not really that I wanted to sit somewhere else. It's because I was being lazy. Like, I really didn't feel like going downstairs and bringing my computer back upstairs. Girl, I have been trying to change my environment. Like, normally, what I do, y'all, normally what I do is I will you know i'll stay in my room and i'll edit my videos and I'll, I'll record my videos right so i'm using this right now which is the elf skin so like i was saying normally i'll you know i'll, I'll record in my room and then i'll edit my videos in my room but sometimes my room just it's not that it gets lonely but even though it's the same scenery i just rather be downstairs it's a lot cooler downstairs versus in my bedroom you know my ceilings are very high in here and there's like one little piece of opening where you know the ac comes through we have central air so it gets kind of hot in my room at times even though i don't feel it because you know i'm used to it and then i have the fan blowing and also have a fan next to me i just sometimes want a different scenery so what i'll do is or what i've been doing lately is i'll just bring my entire computer downstairs my desktop <clears throat> and it's a it's an imac so you know it's just the screen that i'm picking up and bringing though i do have a macbook pro i need to go and get it serviced so that's why i just like to i just basically like to use my my desktop more it's bigger it's just more functional i just prefer that more so you know, it's been down there lately and I've been editing my videos downstairs and just being able to be around everybody in the house. And that's mainly the reason why I wanted to be downstairs, too, is because when I'm upstairs, like I don't really get to spend too much time with my grandkids because I'm editing my video. And by the time I'm done, you know, it's like six o'clock, six thirty. Sometimes it'd be like seven. And like when I say I'm done, like I literally will sit here from like nine to nine to seven or nine to yeah, nine to six working like you know what i'm saying like i do take breaks and i'll go get my grandson from school and stuff so that's like an hour to an hour and a half out of my time so you know i just be wanting to be downstairs sometimes i need girl sometimes we be needing like a different scenery and that's all that i needed was like some kind of like a different scenery you know what i'm saying so i've been downstairs editing my videos and i really didn't feel like bringing everything upstairs like you know i didn't feel like unhooking stuff so i said we're gonna use the phone for today Okay, we're gonna use the phone for today. But anyway, you guys, what y'all been up to? How's y'all week? What y'all been doing now? So y'all know this past weekend, let me tell y'all, let me just say this. A lot of y'all, and I'm not saying y'all that's watching, but just in general people, some people really do need to be thankful for, for a lot of things, for a little bit of things, you know what I'm saying? Like there are so many people right now that are going through so much. I swear to you guys, through a lot so if you feel like you going through a lot or you've been or you are going through a lot or you went through a lot think about those who are going through shit right now like all of these hurricanes and tornadoes back to back so sad so sad and i just feel so so bad for the people that have to you know start all over you know these hurricanes milton helene they have really destroyed people's homes their lives and it's just so sad you know it's it really is sad like that is like an experience that i would never say i would want to be in and so I just, I just been praying hard for these people. Like seriously, I just been really praying because you don't know what can happen here today, going tomorrow. People like, a lot of times people just really be into like materialistic stuff. They just want, want, want. And like the littlest things for a lot of people is just enough. Like, you know what I found not strange, but I felt it to be like, wow, so inspiring. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, I found that the people that you know i've been watching videos okay let me just say that i've been watching videos on youtube and people have been interviewed you know people who are like victims of hurricane helene hurricane milton you know a lot of people have been going through interviews and what's so amazing to me is the fact that a lot of these people they don't even like i don't know if it was me and i lost my house and all my belongings i would be so distraught girl i would be in tears i would be on the floor crying i would be kicking and screaming i would girl you would think that i was a toddler no lie like for real i would be that hurt i probably would be really really depressed not wanting to speak to nobody just really really going through it and to see that these people have lost damn near everything and they still holding it together is like so inspiring and like some people might be like what do you mean inspiring girl like that's not inspiring it is inspiring because these people are so strong and they just lost their homes that they have worked so hard for and they still strong and they still smiling and they still happy and i, I mean that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to still be happy because i would be happy too if i made it through like a devastating storm like that but it's just it just shows you that the mentality of people you know what i'm saying like some people wouldn't be able to take it wouldn't be able to handle it and then like i said i i wouldn't be able to i said i would be sitting there crying i said i would be on the floor kicking and screaming 
I, I probably this is probably how I felt, girl. I'm telling you this only because I've been I never lost everything, but girl, losing a car is enough. Like you know what I'm saying? Like my ex husband, he fucking crashed two of my cars, not at once, but in general. So could you imagine how I felt when he crashed my first car? I was hurt and I was crying and I was like, how am I gonna get through this? Like I was stressed, girl. I was really stressed the fuck out. So for me to be acting like that over some transportation, you know what I'm saying? I can't imagine how I would feel if I had a house and and it's gone. Like, despite the fact these people do probably have home insurance, some people didn't. But even if you do have home insurance, it's still like, oh, my God, I just freaking lost, like, what I worked so hard for. And they just be so calm and strong. And I give it to them. I swear to you guys, I have been praying and just praying and praying for these people because this is, like, one of the worst storms that we have encountered in, like, years and, like, I just pray that everybody be safe, everybody be able to get their lives back in order, and that the cleanup and the build-up process don't take too long. I, you know what I'm saying? And they can get all the help that they need and deserve, because this is crazy. Like, I can only imagine, I can't even imagine what these people are going through. And all I can say is just, you know, pray. You just got to stay prayed up. Just pray. Just pray. And just also be very, very careful, because I know a lot of people do like to give to, like, um, you know, you know to um like um donations and things like that like a lot of people do like to give donations and contribute and this is what i'm gonna say to you guys <clears throat> excuse me i gotta get some water this is what i'm gonna say to you guys i understand that you want to do the right thing but be very careful and be very mindful when you are giving your money to any type of organization claiming to help those victims of milton and helene just be very careful because there are so many different scams going out there these days and not just for like you know um the hurricanes but just in general but but it seems like a lot of people love to take advantage of those people that have gone through a lot you know what i'm saying you always see a lot of organizations pop up once some type of natural disaster has you know happened so just be very mindful and do your research when you are donating your your time your money your goods to any type of organization for these natural disasters because you don't want to be a victim you want to help those so just be very careful and it's sad that people do shit like that like i cannot stand no fucking scammers for real i can't i cannot scam I stand no goddamn scammers girl what i told y'all last week remember when i told y'all last week that i kept getting all these emails right talking about oh we're from this company we from that company and they was all a bunch of scams still getting them like all different type of scams you don't even know what to believe anymore that's probably why i'll be like you know what is this my time it probably is my time to you know call it not quit off of youtube but i don't know because i can't decipher no more which which is real and what the fuck is not real okay but either way i'm just saying be careful and be very mindful when you're giving out your money okay because i'll be seeing too many people get scammed i hate to see the older people get scammed when the elderly begin scam girl that's when i'll be just like two through and piss the fuck off but anyway running my goddamn mouth so anyway i hope y'all all having like a really great day when y'all are watching this okay i hope y'all all having like a really great day um yesterday was sunday it was wash day up in my house like straight up it was wash day for everybody like basically um four out of six people was getting their hair washed yesterday so, um i washed mumsy's hair um for her i washed her hair and then you know i blow dried it and then i went ahead and put it back in the cornrows i just made eight cornrows in her hair she got some real thick hair too mumsy got some thick ass hair so i just put it back in the cornrows so that way she could wear her, her little headband wig we got a couple of headband wig videos to do she and i um but yeah i did that and then i also was cooking dinner yesterday i made some chuck roast steak and girl oh child when i tell you that shit was good that shit was good it was so good y'all let me tell y'all okay let me just tell you real quick okay so i had put the meat in I, you know i seasoned it i um i marinated it and i cut some potatoes up you know i cut some potatoes up put them in there had some pico de gallo marinating with it. i love pico de gallo especially when i got it from winco the other day we went grocery shopping on saturday so i got some pico de gallo from winco right oh and it was so good normally i'll get it from like fries or food city but girl the one from um actual winco it just it it was so fresh it looked like they just came from cutting it and putting it in a bowl it was that fresh now normally i like to get it from food city because it is a mexican or hispanic grocery store so i really do prefer to get it from there because it's pico de gallo and it's fresh but at winco when i tell you it was so fresh and so it just was really pretty it was it it was just it, the vegetables and it looked so good so i made the roast chuck and i put the meat in about 11 o'clock 
like 11, I think it was like 11, right? 11, 11.30, like 11. And I then um, put it in the oven. I put it on 265 degrees. And then about three o'clock, it was about three, 3.30, I heightened it. Um, you know, I raised the temperature to like 300. And then I didn't finish cooking it until 6.05. And it was so tender, girl. Potatoes was perfect. They wasn't all mushy. You know, I just cut the potatoes big enough, like one potato and four, so they was big potatoes. I cut them big enough so that way they, um, you know, they wouldn't get mushy. So we had that. I made some white rice. And then I also had some rice that I had made a day before that, some yellow rice. So I had some leftovers of that. But we're not about to let anything go uneaten. Times is hard. Economy is hard and shit and high. So, you know, we had that. And what else did we have with it? Oh, and the potatoes, you know, the potatoes. So that was dinner for yesterday. And I'm going to have me some for leftovers and shit. And then, you know, after that, you know, I just sit around. I watched some TV. I edited a vlog and stuff. Um, I did watch some TV. My um, favorite TV series came back on, which is um, From. From came back on. So for those of you guys who will be watching From, I know y'all know it came back on. So MGM From, I was watching that. It's on MGM. I was watching that because, you know, it was the new episode on Sunday, but I get to watch it on Saturday night at 9.30. Excuse me, at 9 o'clock because the time difference. So I just rewatched that because I really do like this. So I was rewatching that. And uh, Brayden Mumsy's hair up. Tati went and got her hair washed. She went to the salon to, um, and got her hair washed from Mecca. And then later on that night, I washed my own damn hair too. That was my weekend. On Saturday, we went grocery shopping. Now there's a new grocery store that just opened up closer to me, which is a newer Winco um, in Goodyear. So, you know, that opened up today. I'll probably go through and check it out. I want to check it out. Like Other than that, you guys, I've been chilling, you know. i just been hanging in there. This week, I'm going to make it a better week for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, we be a little bit hard on ourselves, a whole lot of hard on ourselves. So this week, I said, you know what? I'm going to have a better week. I'm going to make sure that I have a better week. You know, I got to give myself some grace. And that's about it. That's about it. So here I am. You know, it's Real Talk Wednesday. We do have a sponsor for today's video. And I'm not really sure if you want to call the other person or product a sponsor. Because it's more or less like, I don't know, a review. It's my personal opinion. So I can't really say this is a sponsor because it isn't like a full product. But I'm just going to tell you how I feel about it. I'm not really going anywhere. I just figured today I was sitting here and I would chit chat with you guys while I do my makeup. Even though I have nowhere to go and I don't really like to wear makeup. I just figured we're going to do our makeup together. We're going to chit chat. And what fun would that be? Something different. Sometimes I don't want to always sit in my room. I just want to sit in this part of my room. But I figured we could do our makeup together. Y'all know I'm basic. Very, very basic. I am using a bronzing palette from Juvia's Place for the color of my eyelids. Okay. I'm very, very basic. I don't need a lot of makeup on. And I feel like, look, as long as I got my eyebrows on and my eyelashes on, I'm good to go. Got on some new eyelashes today um, from the same company that I do like to wear all the time, but just a different style. And I do have an eyelash video that I did put together for you guys because I did get a bunch of new eyelashes that I ordered. Yeah, I'm going to edit that and get that out for y'all. So that's what I wanted to do today. I figured we just do our makeup together. So if y'all got your eyeshadow palette out or whatever, then go ahead and get it together. We're going to do our makeup while we chit chat. So the first person that sent me a product, and I'm not really sure this is supposed to be a review or what have you, but I was really thrilled about, let me, girl, let me tell y'all, I was really, really thrilled about receiving an email. Y'all know I love smell goods. I love to smell good. I bet you love to smell good. Okay. Oh, and also I did find some new Muslim oils on um, Amazon for $8 for the same size bottle that I purchased for 20 and they have really, really good reviews. So I'm going to be purchasing from that because twenty dollars is a lot for that goddamn baby uh, body oil. Okay, yes. But anyway, so I love to smell good. And um, a company reached out to me like a few weeks back and asked me, did I want to try out their perfumes? I would be part of like, um, I don't know, a campaign with them. The way the email read, it just sounded really, really nice. It just felt it sounded really, really good. I was like, oh, I'd love to be a part of this. You know, I love I love perfumes. I love to smell good. Okay, I love my home to smell good. I love to smell good. So when I read the email, you know, of course I was like, okay, this sounds really interesting. I'm going to get some nice products, some nice perfumes, and I'll be able to test them out and smell them. This is what I felt that was going to go down because that's how it was explained in the email, right? Okay, well, anyway, so I accepted and... Last week, I did receive the product in the mail. Now, I, honestly, I was very surprised that this was the product because it was very small, the little the little box. Now, you did say you was going to send me perfume and you was going to send me the collection. So I did think that it would be packaged a lot nicer and in a bigger 
in a bigger container, right? So anyway, it wasn't as I thought. Let's just put it like that. And none of this was what I thought. So the brand is called Kareen New NYC, Kareen NYC. And this is them right here. This is their um, brochure or their stock card of the four perfumes. And these are just basically stories eliminated in fragrances, okay? So they're telling their stories through fragrances, which is really different. When I pulled out the products, I realized, oh, this is not what I thought it would be. So I did leave them and put them in here, so yeah. I did, I did say I, I thought I was going to get the collection, right? Because that's what the email said. It did say that to me, the email was very deceiving. You know, you know why they be like, um, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> that goes for the emails too. Okay, girl. So anyway, they sent me four of these products. Um, everything was in different packaging, different bottles. Here's my number one thing. When you're sending out anything to somebody who you're trying to get them to promote your product, you should make me want to make sure that everything matches and it's just really packaged nice. So I do have four of these different little bottles. I have one that looks like this. I have one that looks like this with, with you know, with like things on it. Yeah, very. And then I have one like this. Okay. And then one like this. Everything is going all over the place. The one perfume, which is this one here, Santal Sky, was barely smellable. You could barely smell it. And I was very disappointed with that because at first you thought it would smell great because, you know, you do need a couple of sprays. And this is a couple of sprays in here, honey. OK, so it wasn't fair. It was just hard to smell. Very faint. And then the next one, I believe it's this one. Let's see. Is it scent one? Yeah. Scent one. <clears throat> and then we have. Nitro Nior. I'm trying to figure out which one it is that just smells straight up like grapefruit. Smells like they took the grapefruit, squeezed it out the bottle. I squeezed it out the fruit and poured it in the bottle. That's exactly what it smells like to me all the way. And then this one here, which is called, well, I don't even know because there's no name on it. Okay. So anyway. Okay. So the one that has no name on it, you'll definitely want to know what the name of it is because this is the one that smells like straight grapefruit. It has like this very pungent smell and it's not something that I would want to wear, okay, at all. Like this smell, you know how something smells and you'd be like, don't smell it because it smells bad, but then you keep smelling it. That's what I'm getting. I like, I am keep going back, smelling it. It doesn't have a good smell at all. And this one, I have no idea what it's called. Um, Let's see. Well, let's see. It's probably called, all right. So the other three have names on it and this one doesn't, but that really doesn't mean anything. Scent X1, this is not even the name. It doesn't tell you what the hints are in the perfume, but I do know that it smells like straight grapefruit, okay? What I will say, it doesn't matter which one. They give me, these perfumes are definitely giving me like old smell. You know what I'm saying? Like you ever go to somebody, an elderly person's home and they have old perfume laying around and it has like this really pungent old smell and it just has a smell that you just don't want to put on you. That's what I'm getting from all of these. Like a very, a smell that just smells old, very old. Let me go and wipe my arm off real quick. As you guys can tell from the thoughts of mine regarding this perfume, it's not a scent that I would like to wear. Um, these are definitely not April scents. I don't wear these type of scents. So, you know, what's good for me may not be good for you. What I don't like, you may really, really love. So, you know, to each his own. But they are very strong and they have like an old scent. They just smell like very old perfume. Okay, like old, inspired old and very strong. Okay, so not my scent, very old lady, ladylike, like old, old lady, like old, old, old lady. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, moving right along, okay? We're going to get right into this real talk. If y'all have a real talk that y'all would like me to talk about, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line real talk, or you can also use my April's real talk at gmail.com as well. Please make sure to put in the subject line real talk. If you want to change the name of the people that you're speaking about, you can go ahead and let me know that you've done so. If you don't care to change the name or you want me to do so, just let me know in the email. Other than that, girl, let's get into this real talk. Okay. Mm -hmm. All 
All right, guys, let's do this. Real talk. I'm starting to feel black women are so ghetto. They're so ghetto, guys. Hi, April. My name is Evelyn, and I am a 26-year-old black female. And may I say I am so embarrassed and disappointed within our black women. So me and my homegirls were out here in Vegas just chilling, enjoying our lives, you know, doing us. We gambled, we shopped, we toured the town. Please tell me why did we end up in an altercation and then hands-on fight with these group of females. So, April, we at the Las Vegas Strip, you know, Old Vegas, where they have the performers standing in their little circles, you know, trying to make their money. So, we, we walking, taking pics, recording, checking out the scenery, looking in the souvenir shops, eating, you know, really enjoying ourselves. It was just me and my best friend, okay? My girl, my day one. We made this trip because it was one we wanted to do, like a bucket list type thing. So anyway, we tried to record and take pics with one of the people that stand in the circles. And these three black females came in our video being real aggressive, ignorant, rude, and dysfunctional as we're trying to record with one of the performers. I tell you, these raggedy ass bitches got in the video, like literally stood in the camera and started doing all types of BS, like gang signs, I believe. They were dancing, shaking their asses, being loud behind one of the performers, like April in the video, not walking past doing this, but being in the video. So, of course, myself and my friend both said something because who invited you bitches into our camera feed? These hoes started getting belligerent along with disrespectful to me and my homegirl. We ended up arguing and then we, we ended up seeing these hoes later on somewhere in Vegas because we wasn't too far from where we first saw them. So we see them later and these hoes start calling us out our names, etc. So, of course, we're going back and forth. Then it ended up with me and my friend fighting these three bitches. What I'm trying to figure out, April, is why do our own people always have to be so ignorant, so disgusted, so disrespectful to each other? Here we are trying to win in real life, like seriously, like win, trying to prove to these white folk that we're not all the same. And they're making us look like a bunch of wild animals. I cannot understand for the life of me why other black women want to fight another black woman. Like I ain't never scared and always stay ready for a bitch, but we truly was trying to enjoy ourselves. Meanwhile, these raggedy ass, bad wig wearing Timu Sheehan sale fake ass Fashion Nova outfits are really starting to get on my last nerve. Why do we tear each other down? When I tell you we got active with these hoes, when I tell you we got active with these hoes in Vegas, we did. But what I'm trying to understand is why can't can we not support one another when it comes to our race and our background, etc. I tried to enjoy myself. And yes, I did. But I have been really overwhelmed with the way our black women have been acting in real life. Can you please explain since you are one of our elder? Thank you, Ev Evelyn. First of all, I am not one of y'all motherfucking elders. OK, so you got me fucked up, Evelyn. Well, let, let's just be for real. I'm just going to say that. I mean, thank you for sending me the email on, but I am not an elder. Excuse you. I'm 50, not 55, 56. And if I was an elder girl, why the fuck would you even say that? Like, because you one of our elders. What? Anyway, you know what's so crazy though? I mean, I understand where Evelyn could be coming from, but you know what's so crazy? Did she really say in this email, okay, she was calling them all kind of ratchet hoes, bitches. Um, she said they got on, wait, what? She said, when I tell you these raggedy ass bitches, she was calling them raggedy ass bitches. She was like, these hoes started getting belligerent, okay? Then she was like, where is the fake Timu shit? Okay, she said, meanwhile, these raggedy ass bad wig wearing Timu she in fake ass fashion nova outfits are really starting to get on my nerves why do we tear each other down Evelyn did you just tear them down like Evelyn you tore them down so fucking bad bitch they under the ground they under the dirt you tore them the fuck down you went down okay she's talking about why do we have to tear each other down when she just teared the shit out of them down like, like like for real for real like I'm not even hating on her tearing them down like straight up I'm really not because I could like I'm, I'm saying I have called bitches things like this too okay for less all right for less drama but she tore them the fuck down she tore the dumb bitches a new one okay and she's talking about why we tearing each other down well i don't know evelyn why the fuck are we because it sounds like you was having a good old time tearing their asses down now you know what this i okay i understand what she's trying to gather but you know what i'm starting to really not understand because she don't understand so what i'm not understanding is why do why do black men feel the need to tear black women down like have y'all seen that lately like i'm, I'm being straight up 
straight up. I have seen that so much lately. They be having a little podcast and stuff. You know what I'm saying? They be having a little podcast and they be straight tearing women apart to pieces. You know, they always got something the fuck to say. Like, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to bash their asses because black men and black women get on my goddamn nerves. Hispanic men and Hispanic women get on my goddamn nerves. Everybody get on my motherfucking nerves. There's no race that doesn't get on my nerves. It's not even a racist thing that people just get on my nerves. That's what it is. But like for real, for real, I've been I've been seeing all their little podcasts and stuff. And I don't even know why I'm calling up all their little podcasts, but I've been seeing their podcasts on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And when I tell you they be tearing black women down, they be tearing them to shreds. They always got something to say. Always they be making fun of um women that are single mothers. Like for real, for real, y'all making fun of women that are single mothers when y'all are the reason why they're single. Because not just y'all don't have to just walk out and leave, but y'all could be true assholes to where women don't want to fuck with y'all. Whose fault is that? If you're a true asshole, it's your fault that you're a true asshole and we don't want to fuck with you not ours because we don't want to deal with the bullshit and decide to stay with you just so we don't be no single mother no i don't know about anybody else but i'm not about to be putting up with nobody being an asshole to me i don't give a fuck if i be single for the rest of my goddamn life okay i would not put up with no bullshit but i understand what she's trying to say but i i wouldn't say like all of black women are like that you know some women I, you know i don't even think it's a black thing to be honest with you and i'm being for real when i say that you know because i don't want to tear no race down because let's not just tear no race down and yet we are supposed to lift each other up we're supposed to be there for one another as a black community but I just think for I just think like this I agree with that part but I just think also like this as women we have to we have to hold each other up now I get the fact that you were trying to enjoy yourself in um Vegas you know what I'm saying Vegas is a great place I like the place where you were at old Vegas Hollywood Strip yes I do know the people that were in the circles and stuff they have some like really really th good things to do I love the buffet there I went to the same buffet every time I went food is a phenomenon I can't remember the name of it but I definitely could I can I can tell you how to get to that motherfucker but yeah so when you in when you when you are in um, Vegas, you do want to enjoy yourself. A lot of people be doing mad shit just for um, clout, you know? See these young girls, you see these women. It don't even have to be young girls. Mm -mm. It'd be women of our age, my age, any age, acting stupid on camera. And, like, I get that. Like, there is a lot of people in this world that would just do anything on camera and really don't give a fuck. They don't care if they disrespecting you. They don't care if they're in your video. They don't give a fuck. As long as they get their little camera time and shine, then it's okay. And a lot of people think that they just give them the red, they just give them the green flag to, like, go, like, it's okay to be ratchet. But, honey, I'm here to tell you, ratchetness is not cute. It really is. not some people are just trying to have a good time and enjoy themselves, and then they have those who are just trying to enjoy themselves too and i guess ratchet is different for everybody i just wouldn't really want to say that all black women do that um evelyn because you as a black woman i wouldn't think that that would be cool to say now trust me when i tell you we have had our fair share of being disrespected okay in life throughout life and still to this day as a black woman we have been disrespected to the utmost and it's so crazy because i don't feel like we get enough credit for the shit that we have to endure we have to put up with and we have to go through like seriously i really really don't and like i was saying it's bad enough in my opinion in my motherfucking opinion it's bad enough that we as black women have to be tore down by our own black men but then for another black woman to tear down another black woman that's just as bad because we've been getting tore down for god knows since when you know what i'm saying before we even got on the slave shit to come here we've been getting tore the fuck down so i mean like are we ever gonna just be able to just live and breathe and just be happy with ourselves like let's just be through now evelyn you you did say that we tear each other down and stuff and girl you know i was joking in the beginning when i did say you tore her down but Girl, you tore her the fuck down. Let's just be for real. You can, you tore her. You read her to the book was fucking done. Okay, just like that. You put her on speed reading. If she was, you was like an audible for her. Okay, like straight up, you was like an audible. You tore her the fuck down. I don't even know if that was a read. That was an audible read. That definitely was an audible read, for real. Because you tore her to part, tore her to pieces. Okay. I get it. They got raggedy wigs. I can I see raggedy wigs all the fucking time. But you don't think that you tore them down just because they have a raggedy wig doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad women or that they're ratchet. Maybe they were just having a really great time the same way that you and your homegirl were having a good time. Maybe they were too. Your definition of good times and fun is not their definition of good times and fun. Now, granted, I probably would be more on your definition side because I don't really want to be outside shaking my ass, being loud and belligerent and allowing people to look at me and make a scene. That's not my thing, okay? The only time that I'm trying to make a scene is if you disrespect me and I really don't want to make a scene then. But if you continuously keep going, I'm going to definitely make a scene. And I'm going to embarrass you, hopefully not myself, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't even give a fuck because I don't want to be disrespected. Her definition or their definition of fun is probably not 
not yours. However, there is a way to carry yourself in public. I'm not really sure to see what's going on. And I don't really think like it's just a black thing. Like just generation in general, okay? People in general have changed a lot over time. I don't I hate to say that. I feel like sometimes it has a lot to do with social media, the way people be behaving in, in public and shit like that. Like I don't mind seeing people like do their little vlogs in public or what have you, but doing a, the most in public is is one thing that i really don't be for that's got to do with people in walmart recording everybody while they're dancing or harassing people i don't like shit like that that is not cool to me so i don't really care what race it is that shit is not cool and people do sometimes do the most in public who's to say that these three girls that y'all had an altercation with maybe they was under the influence you know what i'm saying because this is vegas not saying that either way it was right and i'm no way shape or form am i taking up for them but i just feel like we have to kind of like Sometimes we got to teach people because they just don't know. And us battling them and going back and forth with them is definitely not going to make the situation any better. My thing is this, like, I know I'm probably older now. Like you said, I'm your elder, what have you. But I be feeling like this, like in my younger times, like when I was like your age, which was half a 25 years ago, because um, I'm, I'm I'm double your age. You know what I'm saying? I'm your elder for sure, probably. Right. But anyway, and when I was your age, I would be quick to have like a bad temper. I will cuss anybody out and didn't even care and just and 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 and, and just cuss you out and didn't even give a fuck, okay? And that was just me. I always seemed like I had a chip on my shoulder, or maybe not even always, but I enough times. And at 25, 26, that's a very young age too. So you still learning, you know what I'm saying? You still really learning. And like the things that I know now in my life, I wish I really would have like took heed to them. And I wish I really, really would apply what I know now then in my life. Because now it's not that I'm scared of nobody because I'm never scared. In the same way, Evelyn, that you stay ready, bitch, so the fuck do I, okay? But there's a time when you have to learn how to pick and choose when you stay ready. And even though some people don't like to walk away from shit, sometimes you just got to be the bigger person, like they say, and walk away. But like literally be the bigger person because being ignorant and belligerent in public is like so embarrassing. And you're like, you never know who's recording nowadays because people love to get clout and record other people unknowingly and unwillingly and definitely without consent and post it on any type of social media like world star hip-hop or just social media in general and here you go scrolling one day and you see your dumb ass out in public making a real big fool out of yourself you know what i'm saying so i get I, I, what you're saying about you know them being disrespectful but sometimes you just gotta avoid people to the most sometimes you just have to walk away even if it was something that you were doing at the time bro sometimes you just have to walk away because you really don't know where things could have been taken you guys could have really gotten in such a bad fight to where you guys went to jail and nobody don't want to be on vacation or just enjoying themselves for a couple of days and end up behind bars locked the fuck up because well let me tell you it is no fun blowing a jail girl it don't even matter if it's county jail or you know what i'm saying that jail it's just not fun take it from me it's just definitely not fun okay so try to avoid shit at all at all costs but as for the way black women be acting these days the ghetto and shit i mean i'm not even gonna sit here and lie and be like no they don't they don't they don't because i have seen quite a few things in my time on social media where it's like you really gotta act like that you look so fucking stupid do you not see how stupid you look if you were my daughter and i seen this i would knock you the fuck out that's how i be feeling now I'm, I'm trying to sit here and recall have i ever seen anything like in person person when anybody ratchet and then again i can't remember because girl sometimes i can't even remember what i did yesterday okay but i will say i have seen it on tv or on social media and you know you ever have like secondhand embarrassment that's what i be getting sometimes for people it's just like secondhand embarrassment and then sometimes when i look at some of these young black girls young black women and the way they be performing or the way they be behaving because i don't know if i want to call it a performance or a behavior but the way they be acting i just be having secondhand embarrassment and i just be looking at them and shaking my head and then i start feeling like bitch you're getting old that's how i start feeling about myself like oh i'm getting old if i feel like this is embarrassing and i'm shaking my head at them and i'm like wow you know why are they acting like this I, am i getting old or am i I just demure okay i don't even know or mindful like but there are some things that they do now that i would have never done in public like yeah i was like moody not even really moody but i did have an attitude and i would cuss you out but i wasn't i never made a scene okay i wasn't ratchet in public I wasn't shaking my ass and doing things that you know you see a lot of them doing now i wasn't doing any of that but if you did something disrespectful to me i was going to let it be known so please don't get it in your mind that i was out there being loud and belligerent because that was never me but i would t i let you have that shit, okay if i had to you know but as far as this new generation and stuff like i don't really want to put them down because a lot of them are not like that it's just it, you know everybody is it's shit. i don't even think it has to do with age it just has to do with the person 
person's personality, their upbringing, their maturity level. So even though I could say this generation or this new generation or these young women these days, like 20 years old, I can't really say that about all of them. You know what I'm saying? Because I have a daughter who's 22 and she don't act nothing like that. And neither does my 17 year old. They don't act nothing like that. And neither does Tati. So it's like, huh, I can't speak for everybody. I can't speak for those that are younger because not everybody that age does that. Should there are people my age, women my age that are 50 who act ratchet in public like straight up there are women my age that be acting the fuck up in public and you just be looking at them like you know you should be ashamed of yourself you know you is too old to be acting like that but look girl like i said it has a lot to do with their upbringing and shit like that and their environment now granted i grew up in the projects okay in the projects in new york city queens but just because i grew up in the project does not mean i need to carry on like that and i don't okay i don't but it just has to do with them. Your mother could bring you up really, really well in life. And your mother could teach you how to behave. And your mother could be super duper straight. But when you leave the house, you're going to do what the fuck you want to do, right? So who's to say these young girls that are out and about acting the fuck up in public, when they get home around their family, some of them don't even act like that. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't know what to tell you. But I will say this. I do get sometimes disgusted when I see our black people, our black women acting the fuck up and showing out and doing shit that they don't really need to do in public. It can become a secondhand embarrassment. But she just said, Evelyn said, we um, we want to prove, basically she wants to prove white people wrong that we don't always act like this. Sweetheart, I don't give really a damn to who prove it to. I don't have to prove anything to any race because you know what? Black people, white people, Hispanic people, orange people, purple people, green people, they're going to think about us the way they fucking want to think about us. It is what it is. It don't matter if we was to be all 100% proper, correct, and do the right thing and never have gotten in trouble from here on out. They would still have something to say about us, black folk, okay? So why even worry about trying to impress another race? Just be yourself and just be mindful of who you are. But just realize that, you know what, some people are just who they are. And sometimes you just got to walk the fuck away from folks. Period. You know what I'm saying? But, girl, you did tear them the fuck down. You tore the raggedy ass whole team who wearing wig shame. She in fake ass Fashion Nova clothes wearing hoes. You tore them the fuck down. Now, what I'm trying to figure out, y'all, is what is a fake Fashion Nova? She in is a fake Fashion Nova. Is that what she was trying to say? Fashion Nova is fake in itself, okay? Girl, Fashion Nova ain't no high end brand. Let's just be for real, girl. They sell the same exact stuff on She in as they sell on Fashion Nova. With the same fabric, okay? You just paying triple the price on Fashion Nova. So you think about it. Which one would you really rather buy from? Period. Okay. Moving All right. right. So this one doesn't have a subject. She just put real talk, and that's fine, okay? Hello, April, and everyone in the comments. My name is Reese, and I have been a follower of your channel since the very beginning. So glad you brought real talk back. However, I truly can understand you have to take a break from it. April, I live in Cali, and when I tell you it has gotten bad out here, with the drugs taking over, it has gotten really bad. Now, my story is a little different, and I'm actually a mother and a grandmother like yourself and have been helping to raise my children's children. I have seen so many people come and go and so many things that I just am so ashamed to say I have seen. Recently, I found out that my cousin is living on the streets and is nothing but a damn thief. April, I have been searching for this woman for weeks now, going to homeless camps, and I finally found her. I took her in and have been trying to get her to do the right thing from finding work and just doing the right thing. April, she constantly says it's easier to steal than going to work. She loves the thrill. She loves the rush. She loves the fast money, the instant money. I can't understand how one can be so into the money but live in the streets of Oakland. You can't be doing that well if you're living in the streets. April, after constantly speaking with her and noticing her movement, I found out she's nothing but a street walker, you know, a prostitute. She never was stealing to survive. She was selling herself. So she really doesn't live on the street. She lives in wherever she can sleep. Maybe it can be a homeless camp or in a hotel. I'm trying to figure out what I can do to help, what I can do to get her to change her mind. This country has become shit from the homeless issue, the drugs, the stealing. April, I am at a loss of words. I am sure she does use drugs because she's a streetwalker. She's a younger cousin of mine in her, 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 her mid-30s, and I'm really trying to show her the way. Basically, the only family who wants to deal with her. I know you live close in Arizona. What do you see in your environment, and, would you, and what would you suggest me doing for her? Thank you. And what is her name? Reese. So we got Reese here who has a cousin who's in her 30s. Reese's my age. Reese got grandkids and children. Well, yeah, duh, if you had grandchildren, that means you have children, right? But anyway, so she she was looking for her long lost cousin, I guess. I don't know if she's long lost, but she said she was looking for her for some weeks. Um, She came find out she was homeless or what have you. So she was looking at homeless camps and looking all around, finally found her. So her she's been living on the streets in Oakland. 
brought her in, took in, tried to help her find a job, tried to help her do the right thing and just do right. But she said she'd rather steal because it's easier and it's fast money. Come to find out she wasn't thieving. She was selling herself as a prostitute, just trying to get by. Now, Reese feel like she's a drug addict because she's, you know, in the streets and she's a prostitute. She never said she was a drug addict. You just feel like she is because she's a prostitute. And that's not always the case. You can't just assume because somebody is selling they, they sell that they're on drugs because that's not the case. OK, some people just trying to survive out here. The economy is bad. So I'm not making any excuses for your cousin. But don't assume that she's um, she's a drug addict just because she she's um, she walks the streets because it does sound like she assumed that she is. Because what did she say? Yeah, she says, I'm sure she does use drugs because she's a streetwalker. So you really don't know that she does drugs or not, but you just assume because she's a streetwalker. OK, so first of all, like I said, don't assume anything because sometimes people are just trying to survive and get it how they can because they just need to get it how they can. So let's not assume that she's on drugs. No, yeah, the world has come to shit. The country has come to shit. OK, that's I've been saying that, you know, what I'm saying I don't really know what else to tell you about it. Um, drugs have taken over really bad in California. I did see this documentary like some weeks ago. Um about Cali and the drug epidemic and it's very sad and disheartening the way that they just don't really care it just seems like a lot of the people in the counties don't really care about the homeless issue or the epidemic and then it's like you can't really make a person or force a person to get clean they're going to get clean when they feel like it if they feel like it but I feel like with the homeless people there are those who are homeless that aren't are drug addicts and then there are those who are homeless that are drug addicts either way it's just a sad case scenario and California has really gotten really bad. I did see, like I said, this documentary a few weeks back on YouTube. Very, very interesting. It's very interesting the way like San Francisco, I think it was San Francisco is not the way it used to be anymore. Like, you know, in San Francisco, it was like really clean always. And it was predominantly, you know, just always, always clean and very colorful and nice. And then when I see these videos, like people, all they do is just steal, steal, steal there, like literally steal. And I mean, not, that's not all they do. Okay. Cause I could be wrong for saying that, but documentary did say that they was going around with the people that were stealing documenting and shit so they do thieve a lot which is unfortunate and like they don't just thieve there they thieve everywhere but like some states they don't really arrest you for thieving for like stealing out of the stores and i think it's um the law of california like a certain amount as well as in new york city i think it has to be exactly under a thousand dollars for them to like really really prosecute you for you know stealing because then it's considered grand larceny but they will let you out they'll give you like an appearance ticket or you know a slap a warning and then they'll just let you free and that's the problem with like america i'm not saying we gotta lock everybody up but for those of you guys who are doing like real true crime and doing shit it's like really in, like it's, it's not really working out for other people all the thieving and stealing from all of these stores that's why products is like super duper high now that's why inflation is the way it is because people be going in these stores and still a mass shit and then we have to pay in the long run but as as back to Reese, so as far as your cousin she's in her 30s she's grown if that's how she's going to get it honey then that's how she's going to get it. i understand where you're coming from with where, where you're coming from as a family member but you did also say you're the only family member that wants to deal with her so i'm wondering why is that okay there has to be some issue or reason or why is that you know but like i said um it's good that you did find her. So at least, you know what, even though she doesn't really want to be in your care and even though she don't really want to be there with you, you know what I'm saying? She want to do her own thing. I feel like it's still good that you did find her because you know why? She knows where you live at now. So if she really, really needs your help or really decides in the long run that she wants to get herself off the streets and do the right thing, at least she has it you know where she knows where who she can come to at least she's able to find you sometimes that's all the person needs you know like when we're grown we can't force another person to do what we want them to do even if it is for their betterment and we would like for them to follow our lead and we would really like for them to, to do what we said to do because it would work out for them it would be like a good thing right but sometimes you know what people gonna do shit when they ready to do shit like straight up like don't hold your breath on your cousin like she's gonna do the shit when she's ready to i just say this Make sure that you check on her from time to time. Make sure she's safe. Make sure she's using protection because there are so many nasty ass people out here. And if she is trying to make her bread and butter by being a prostitute and getting them getting to the bag, then you can only respect her for that and just at least try to help her. Like I always say, there's a job for everybody. And people will probably look at me crazy after I say this, but just like a stripper, that's a job, right? And there's men who like to watch women dance naked or semi naked, right? Okay, so somebody's got to do that shit. So why not? These are the women that's going to do it. OK, same thing goes with a prostitute. Some men can't get no pussy because they're either ugly, fat, nerdy. There's all type of reasons why they can't get no pussy. OK, so there's a woman 
that can do it for them. They might have to pay for that shit, but it's a job, right? So there's a job for everybody. So I just would say this, um, Nisi, make sure that she's safe. Check on her. Let her know that your door is always open if she needs any type of help or somewhere to stay. You know what I'm saying? Make sure she uses protection because, girl, listen, there are some really, really trifling ass men out there in this world. And not just men, but women too. So, you know what I'm saying? Because you could be a prostitute and you could probably sleep with anybody. Not anybody, but male or female. I don't know. I'm, I'm assuming. Okay. But there I go. Make an assumption. But either way, make sure that you tell her to use protection. Because I've seen this video recently and then i told y'all that people I, I did a I, I did a video like weeks ago about hiv and this one guy you know what i'm saying we did a video we, we watched it real time but i've been seeing this one guy popping up on mad feed he's a light-skinned black guy light-skinned black guy got tattoos got missing teeth he is a walking std billboard like straight the fuck up i think he said in a video because i've seen two different videos of his i think he said he has three stds and sometimes he'll tell the girls and sometimes he won't he don't give a fuck about getting it cured or t getting medication for it because he doesn't have any discharge it's not burning so why even bother going to get any type of medication because he don't have no discharge and he don't have no type of burning he said that he do be telling women sometimes and then some women he don't um the ones that he do he still fuck them he don't give a fuck he fuck you raw um, some girls don't care like why would you think that it was okay to go around fucking people raw when you have a disease if you have a disease why wouldn't you want to get it taken care of why would you want to go get some medication to get it cured yo this dude first of all he looked like a bum he looked like a bum he is a bum and i'm not even assuming the nigga is a bum he's a bum he's got all right would you smash your pass i need to know would you smash your pass i'm trying to see would you smash your pass i need to know all right would you smash your pass i need to know would you smash your pass i'm trying to see would you smash your pass i need to know all right, would you smash your pass? I need to know, would you smash your pass? I'm trying to see, would you smash your pass? Stop! We tell me on a Monday looking like this, bitch. Yo. Me having STDs or not, you hoes still gonna fuck, yo. Me having STDs or not, you hoes still gonna fuck, yo. We tell me on Stop thinking like I'm doing something malicious when after I sleep with you and I give you STDs. It's not, I'm you're not just singled out, you feel me? I, anybody I sleep with, I give STDs too. And, and, and it is what it is. Don't call my phone mad and, and angry and claiming you're going to do this to me, you're going to do that to me. So keep that to yourself. I don't care about that, bro. I don't care about none of that. I don't give a fuck about none of that. You hear me? The, the, the people I sleep with and get STDs to, it's for a reason. And that's straight up. It, it's always... But he looks like a ragamuffin, okay? Like, who would want to screw you even if you didn't have an STD? You still don't look fuckable, okay? You look like a bum. He looks like a straight up fucking bum. But he looked like he got something. He looked like he... He looked like his apartment... He looked like he don't bathe. He looked dirty. He looked like he sleep on somebody's couch, okay? He looked like a bum. So... I'm I'm trying to figure out why do women even find him attractive at all or want to sleep with him okay girl yes i, I seen that video and i was like you gotta be kidding me this dude looks like sh like like trailer trash okay like straight up trash and he's talking about he gets all kind of women what women do you get you got to get some real desperate women some overly desperate women like when i say overly i'm like over the moon desperate because there's no way he don't even have the looks to pull I'm, I'm trying to figure out and if a man tells you that they got an std not one not two but three bitch why are you still trying to sleep with him like are you serious if he got an std if he got three stds i guarantee you i guarantee you that dude probably got hiv like straight up and i know i'm assuming but i mean just from hearing him alone speak and how he cares for his hygiene and shit lets me know that this nigga is a dirty dick motherfucker and he probably got some type of hiv but why would you even want to have sex with somebody that's that dirty? You know what I'm saying? Like, seriously, that dirty. And to think that you really are going to stand there on camera and talk about that shit. Like, people don't have no shame no more. That's what I'm noticing with a lot of people. Nobody has shame anymore. Like, I would be so embarrassed, so ashamed of myself if I was to say what he said. Like, are you really kidding me? You're not going to go get it cured or taken care of because it's not a discharge it's nothing green coming out of it and it's and it's not burning and then he had the audacity to say well if it is discharging nobody ain't gonna see it because it's gonna be dark in the room ew ew brother ew like that's disgusting I, I i don't know there are people don't have no shame no more people don't have no cool 
people that damn sure ain't demi- um, demure and damn sure ain't fucking mindful. There are a lot of fucking stupid people walking around on this earth, I realize. A lot of stupid ass people. It ain't even just in America, okay, Lisi? Because you said this country is fucked up. It ain't even in this country. People are stupid all over the world. Like, straight up, people are stupid all over the world. All I can tell you is just be there for your cousin. Keep your doors open for her, not unlocked, okay? But, you know, just let her know that if she needs anything, that you are there. And just be patient because what you want is probably not what she wants right now. And that's okay. As long as you know that you're going to be there for her and you're the only family that wants to deal with her, then just let her know that and put that out there. Sometimes that right there may make the person kind of switch up and change their mind and feel like, you know what? I'm going to give this just different lifestyle a change, you know? You never know. People go through all kind of shit every day. I tell y'all this. People be going through some shit all the time. There are people going through something that you might be going through right now. You just think that you're the only person that's going through that shit. When there's another few people out there that are going through just as much hardship. Look at the people that just came through and survived this devastation of Florida um, for Hurricane Hale- um, Milton and Helene. These people have survived that. So they really going through something. Like straight up really going through something. Pray for those families. Pray for these people out there. Pray for everybody because everybody need prayer. Straight up. People be going through shit. And maybe this person is mental. So maybe, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not just talking about Reese's cousin, but I'm talking about the dude that got the STDs because you got to really be going through something if you don't give a fuck like that. And I guess then there's some people that just really don't give a fuck that's just them as their personality so not everything is a mental thing it's just not but as far as your cousin Reese, maybe she's going through something mentally i would just definitely keep an eye on her i would definitely keep checking on her if you have her phone number text her from time to time text her every day hey cuz what's up want to come over for dinner girls night something like that you know invite her to things sometimes people just don't have nobody you know, they just don't have nobody. So they turn to the streets because they family, like you said, nobody want to deal with them and they have nobody. And so look where they have to turn to. I'm not using that as an excuse, but you just really don't know. And just look out for your cousin. You know, other than that, you guys, prayers up. You know, let's pray for these families. Let's pray for everybody because everybody need prayer. You know what I'm saying? Even myself. You know what I'm saying? When you just think you have it bad, there's somebody out there that has it 10 times worse. But I love y'all. I hope y'all all have like an amazing day. You know, thanks for watching this real talk, y'all. Um, you know what I'm saying? I will link everything down below. I'm, um, yeah, I'll link the perfume down below as well. So that way you guys can check it out if you choose to, you know, because how I feel about something may not be the same way that you may feel about it. But I love y'all. Make sure y'all rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs the video up. And I will definitely see y'all in the next one.